So as many ministers prophesied in 2024, many disasters and things you never imagined will happen, and it is happening, right? They said it would happen, and now it's happening. So even if you try to run away, even in your house, the recent prophets have prophesied, saying even if you're at home, you might die. You can die. You cannot be protected by anything of this world. Only His word and by His grace, when you humbly listen to Him and obey Him, then you will be protected. So today, to change you or to start something new in your life, or for there to be breakthrough in your issues in order for that to happen, the signs that happened before, the things that happened before, you know, the tra change or its breakthrough in your life. So many people, they know some areas, but they're not interested. Why? Because it happens all the time. So before we start today's message, we're going to listen to one person's testimony, and then we're going to start. Um, so lately, God has been uh, dealing with my heart lately, especially like the communication, and I have like your people. So, communication. So, so at work, my two co-workers, their sisters, they're like in their 50s and 60s. Yeah. <laughs> and their father is 97 and he fell and he broke his toe. Yes. And um, like a couple of days later, my heart was stirred up. Like I need to pray for them. Yeah, as soon as I felt that in my heart, one of the sisters called me over to her. Yeah, she said she was on the phone with her sister, who's taking care of the dad. That's the that day. Yeah, so yeah. I walked over and said, hi, how are you doing? How's your dad? And yeah, so yeah. Her, she was like, it must be now that I should pray since the father can hear me, but I froze. <laughs> Yeah, I 
Brandon another day. <laughs> I, went to, I went to the bathroom and then one of the sisters popped up. <laughs> 네, 화장실에 갔는데 그 자매님들 중에 한 분이 또 화장실에 들어오셨어요. Yeah, after we did our business or washing our hands, I felt like oh, I got to pay for it. 네, 그래서 나와서 손 씻고 있는데 아또 그분이 위해서 기도를 해주겠다 그런 마음이 다시 들더라고요. Yeah, like so 네, 하나님께서 우리를 보내셨다고 하니까 그 트루스 진실을 건지. Yeah, so like, Can I pray 아니, for you? 그래서 기도를 해줄 되겠냐고 물어봤어요. And then she started tearing up a little bit. She's like, Yes, yes, please pray. 눈물을 흘리면서 아, 네, 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 제발 기도를 해주세요. 그렇게 말하. Yeah, and then she hugged me from the side, and I started praying. I don't remember what it is. Side, this is. I know that God and the Holy Spirit was touching her, and then after we prayed, she's like, I gotta call my sister. Yeah, 그리고 성령님이 그분을 감동시키는 확실했고 그 기도를 받은 뒤에 그분이 아내 동생에 전화해야겠다. 어 동생나 가족이 전화해야겠다 그렇게 말하더라고요. I don't know what's going on, but I know God is working. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't lower yourself. Don't look down on yourself. Don't underestimate yourself. You are the temple. You are the church. But the church is the base camp. So the kingdom mindset, no matter what you do, no matter what job you have, it doesn't matter. Many people have the wrong understanding that if God called you, that you cannot do anything fun, and you have to sit in the church office and just pray, or just meditate the word of God. That's why many people misunderstand that if they're called, they have to do that. Just stay stuck in the office. But based on how you're called, your role is different. What you have to do is different. So the calling that God has given to everyone is to go out and preach. Go out and reconcile, right? Just like I saved you and redeemed you, you save others too. And everything else that happens, God will guarantee. So you have to believe in this. So many people in this area, they don't know very well. So when God wants to let this be known to you, He does many things so that you can know this. He does many things, but you're not very interested in what He's trying to do. Just what you're thinking, what you want to complete, what you want to accomplish. You're only focused on what you want to do. You're not interested in what God wants to do. So what you want to do doesn't work out, and what God wants to do doesn't work out either. So both things don't work out. So just because you say, I don't want to do what God wants to do, you know, God will use someone else to do it. So whose loss is it? It's just your loss. Why? Because God wants to use you. So in this time, He called you and He brought you here, but you're doing other things and you're not even wanting to do what God wants you to do, right? So July 4th is Independence Day, right? So 10 days later, this is July 14th, right? So 10 days is trial and test. So 10 days later, so 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If, many, if Americans knew this, they wouldn't be able to believe it. You know, the Christians and Puritans, they came and established America, but they're trying to mess up that initial idea and foundation, right? So God wants to restore back to the original. God never gave up on His plan, but many people have the misunderstanding. So Matthew 16, 1 to 4. So they asked Jesus for a sign. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing Him, asked that He would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. So what God wants you to discern is not about if the weather clear or not. The, the signs of times, right? Not whether the weather is clear or not, but the signs of the times. That's what God wants you to discern. So through you in this time, what does God want to use you for? What does He want you to do in this time to discern that? How is this world functioning right now? What is your role? What do you have to prepare? And how should you be living? So that discernment He's saying, why can't you discern those things, right? You understand? 
So many people think, what, ca- what do I know that I can discern? So when you make ramyun, how do you know if it's the ramyun's cooked or not? What do you look at to know if it's cooked or not? Those who are reasonable, they just come after looking at the time, how much time has passed. Those who have a sensitive smell, they can just tell by the smell. Wait, sorry, those who have a sensitive nose, they can just tell by the smell. So those who do it a lot, even if they just look at it, they know. And if you're pregnant, if you're pregnant, you know when you're going to give birth. You know around roughly what time, what time, what day, right? But you don't know the clear details. That's the mystery. So all of these things, you know, God spoke to you many ways so that you can know these things. So let's go to First Chronicles twelve thirty two. So when I say this, so when December 31st, you know, December 31st is when it ends, right? And then there's another day you should just be able to review, right? So let's go. Of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. So understanding of the times and then to know what you have to do, right? So at your age, at your time, what should I be preparing? What should I do when you know and those who understand, you have no reason to worry because you know everything. Those who are anxious, they don't know. Those people are anxious and worried. So recently in your life, has there been any unexpected things? Unexpected things that have been happening in your life? Any accidents or incidents? Yes, in this morning, some accident, yeah? This morning, they almost got into an accident, right? How come? So if you cannot understand this area, then you're going to complain. You're going to blame God. You're going to complain. And you're, or you're going to do something about those people who did it. They might, you might curse at those people who caused it. Even when Pastor didn't know, he, he responded like that. Why does God keep preventing me from doing what I want to do? When I was in middle school, high school, I told you all of that, right? What happened? Because he didn't know God's word. So he's wasted his life a lot. A lot of wasted time. Your prejudice is very strong. So unless you lay that down, regarding the things that God wants to do new in you, no matter how much he tells you, you cannot understand. And you cannot follow what he wants to do. Anything new in your life. And after time passes, even if you want to try again, it's too late. So who did that? Esau was like that, right? He wasn't interested in the spiritual things. He despised his birthright. So regarding the spiritual authority, he ignored it. He despised it. You know, he valued the uh, bowl of porridge more, right? So... Rather, do you think of the spiritual spiritual things less than the physical thing? Many people are that, but the important thing is that the spiritual realm, you know, rules over the physical realm. So with your flesh, there's no way you can access the spiritual realm with your flesh. You have to believe in God's order. So everyone's saying that this is the last days, right? So the last days, what things are going to happen? What happens in the last days? You know, the Bible clearly says what happens at the last day. So the last day, but there's two things. One is positive and one is negative. So the positive, what is the positive? What is he going to restore? In the end days, I will pour out spirit upon all the people, right? That's the positive. One side is being destroyed, but one side, he finds his people and he pours out his power upon them so that you can overcome all of that things, right? He's been he's pouring out his spirit. So his promise that he's coming back to, he's looking for people who have fulfilled that, you know, he's coming back. So where are you focused on? The last days, you know, it's going to be like the Noah's time. It's going to be like the Sodom and Gomorrah. So Noah's time, so Noah said for 120 
No one believed. Uh, 120 years. No one believed. Only... Was it an effective gospel? Why did no one believe? Because the surrounding situation... They're building a boat on top of the mountain. Those who didn't even see this ocean, would they believe? He said there's going to be a flood. They just laugh, right? Even though he's been saying it for 120 years. So the Bible, what the Bible says, and it'll be fulfilled in his time. But the problem is, it's not the time that you think, but it's the time that God has determined. So if you want to discern that time, without a relationship with God, you cannot discern it, you cannot even know it. So you have to trust the prophet. Why? Because what God wants to do, he's, unless he speaks it to us through the prophet, he will never do it. So someone has to say something, right? They have to let us know what God wants to do. But it's just that you didn't listen, you didn't want to listen, and you said, I don't want. That's why these things are happening, just like Esau. What does it say in Hebrews? When Esau realized that, Esau wanted to repent and he wanted to restore it, but he wasn't even given the chance to repent. Esau wasn't given the chance to repent. So at one point, your choice can cut off all grace. You have to understand. You know, Eve's one choice, her choice in the Garden of Eden, she thought she would become like God, but in the Garden of Eden, it brought the result of her being kicked out, that one choice. So all the choices that you make will bring some kind of result. So listen to God's word. The Lord, since He came, He kept talking about the time. The time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. The time has come. So it's the Kairos time. So, so the time is fulfilled, plero. Even Galatians 4 says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son. So when the time is fulfilled, you know, God in His own way, He's going to preach the gospel. When the time is fulfilled, He's going to manifest Himself. When the time is fulfilled, He's going to say when He's going to come, when the time is fulfilled. So it's always the time is fulfilled, the Kairos time. So you have to discern these times and which side guarantees you, gives you security. You have to choose. Money? If you have money, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with all that money? You know, you do everything you want to do. After that, what remains? It's just emptiness. Emptiness. There's no life. Because that's how God created us. So all of your satisfaction can only become from the Spirit. So you have the relationship with the eternal. So unless you're connected to the eternal, no matter what you do, you cannot be satisfied and you're going to feel empty. Emptiness. Nothing left. So before God, when you understand the treasures that God gives you, then you can become the rich and abundant. So it's not. So you can use all the powers from the kingdom of heaven. You can communicate with God. You can have a relationship with God. As long as you cry out to God, you know, He already knows and He's going to pour out everything upon you. That, that's what the but. So you'll be a prosperous person. So you have to choose. When you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, then all these things, everything that you want to eat, everything you want to drink, everything you want to do, all those things will be added to you. You can live a prosperous life. But if you change the order, in order to get everything you worked so hard, but when you die, you know, your children fight over it. They're suing each other. You know, there was someone like that. You know, father left so much inheritance. There was so much fighting and suing each other. So money, it's just one thing that you might need when you live your life. You know, God never says that he's not going to give you money, but he's going to make you prosperous, not rich. You know, Ab you know, until Abraham, until Isaac, they became prosperous. Until they prospered, God kept blessing them, but there's a condition. 
someone who can deal with it, manage it. Those who know with what kind of purpose those things are given to you. Not to let your name be known, but the Lord, the Father God's name, to be known to all the earth. He uses those people. Even now, if you're all in, your life can be changed. The problem is that process, you have to pass through it, but you don't want to pass through. You don't want to go through. You just want it to come right one moment. You just want it in one second. Then when you're born, he should have just made you been born as an adult right away. Just one way, just come out as an adult rather than be born as an infant, right? But that doesn't happen. So when you, whether you believe in God or not, no matter how much you deny, there's no point. Because, you know, the way God rules over this dominion, you know, even this whole earth right now, He still has the rule and dominion over this earth. So those who are wise will understand this way, understand it, and keep learning from God and know, and they would live a better life. Those people are better. So in the last days, Daniel 12, 10, Daniel 12, 10. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So there's many people who don't like this refining process. They don't want to suffer. They just want to live peacefully. But you live peacefully, what are you going to do? If you want to live in peace and comfortable, then there's someone that's going to suffer next to you. Right? So that person suffering to... Were they born to suffer to give you peace? No, that God never called anyone like that. There's no one that God called for you to live all in for you, but you keep looking for those kind of people who will you know, suffer for you so you can live in peace. But what's the goal? It's always you. Selfish. If your goal is God, then that is not it. You would do the opposite way. You'll be thankful that He uses you. Thank you for using me. Through this, even yesterday, we learned, can I pray for you, right? Just With just that one word, everything gets better, right? Just can I pray for you? You know, he could, she couldn't and she did it one time and then she, her coworkers started crying, right? So communication, just say, can I pray for you? Even those who don't believe, if you say, can I pray for you, they're going to be happy, usually. So when you pray, you receive the revelation of the Spirit and you can discern, what does that person need? God will let you know and then you can just speak it to them. So most people are going to ask, how did you know? You can just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. If you believe, then you'll be like this. How easy it is to preach the gospel like that. So the Lord said, so the fullness of the gospel. So whenever there's about to be some kind of change in life, what happens? If there's a positive, there's a negative. Those who obey, you'll see as a positive. Those who don't obey, it'll seem like some kind of disaster. So the first one. So around you, there's going to be a lot of envy and jealousy, and especially among brothers. Envy and jealousy. Even, you know, he has an older brother and younger brother and younger sister. Since he was young with no reason, his older brother always was envious and jealous of him. There was only one reason. When I go to school, there's no one that can compete against him in school. It was just guaranteed. His older brother, there was too much competition. He couldn't be number one. But the most more foundational issue is one thing. You know, he listened to his the word of God and he obeyed what his parents said and he just did it. But his older brother, he was always thinking. So he never obeyed. 
or listen. If he sh shared the food, you know, her, his mom is very equal. Doesn't matter if you're older or not. It wasn't that much abundant either. But last, when the food came, he did one by one. This is yours, this is yours, yours. And then the parents are all the same, equally fair. So she was very fair and equal. So then Pastor would gather, then her, her, his uncle, uh, older brother would come. Let's play. So in order to play, you have to gather everything that you've collected. You know, she said, older brother's going to do it, so then... What? What? So he took everything. Uh, the older brother took everything. That's how it was from he, when he was young. You know, he didn't like snacks that much, so then when he orders his younger brother, you know, he would give a snack one by one. He know, he, the, his younger brother comes, you know, asking for, is there anything for you want me to do? Then he would give him a snack and he would do it. And then, you know, they gave them pocket money. He took tithe. But his older brother and younger brother didn't do tithe. So wherever he went, people kept giving to him. And when we, they went to the movies at school, you know, they would give, they would pay for him for the movies, and then he would also get money at home, so he would just get the bonus, and he would give tithes. But then he was always abundant, but his other two brothers are always lacking, even now. So for a pastor, it seems like he doesn't have anything, but he's very... Uh, he's living in his own abundance. He, what he needs, he has. But what's the difference? What do you think you need? What do you think you don't need? So just that difference in standard, okay? So envy and jealousy. So towards David, you know, God, uh, the father said, go to the, do a chore. Give your brothers what to need. And go to the war zone. And just check up on your older brothers, right? That's what his father told David to do. So when he went, everyone is trembling and they're trembling at Goliath's word. So do you know what David said? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And I'll get rid of him. I will deal with him. So everyone who listens to him would be going chaotic, right? They say, go go behalf on me. You know, they say the king is looking for someone like that. So if you say it, then the king will even let you marry his daughter if you go and fight. So David said, how dare, how can I become the king's son-in-law? I cannot do that. But his older brother, so David's older brother were at the war zone, right? So they heard this, and suddenly his older brother got angry and started saying things against David. What did he say? First Samuel 17, 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard what he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. Did David abandon his sheep and come to observe? No, he came on his father's, you know, chores, right? But why suddenly is his brother saying these things against David? So when you hear what David said, you know, what he's saying is right. Because it's according to God's word. But if you do according to that word, you know, it's going to be exposed that they're not doing according to that word, right? So that was exposed. So why do you need persecution? If you're living in the right way, then everyone around you is going to go, you know, mess. The whole world, there's going to be so much rioting around you. Around you. So the one, so the messing up the world, right? Do you make the world sleep or do you mess it up? So you don't know your uh, lifestyle. So it's not bad to mess up the world, but it, it's exposing their secrets that they're hiding. That's why they want to kill you. So it's good to mess up the world. Because usually when they give you money, they should go according to their way, but it's not going according to their way. They say they believe in God, but they're doing other things. 
but in the, you know, it seems like that person wasn't living that good. Their past wasn't great, but they keep saying, I believe in Jesus and God will protect me. So that's why they attack you. You know, they have a lot of weakness, so they attack you. Like Trump. So it's more you attack you, just keep saying, I choose to forgive, I choose to forgive. What Trump is doing is right. Look at the bad life. Uh, he had a bad life, but now he's saying, I believe in Jesus and that God protects me. Among the people that God used, is there anyone that didn't kill somebody? I'm not saying for you to kill somebody. Back then and now it's different, you have to know. And did they, he only have one wife? In the old, there's some people who say it would have been nice to live in the Old Testament. You know why? Because if you look at Acts 17, there was a time of ignorance. So Acts 17, verse 30. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. So there's a determined time. You know, God determined the time. So in the time that God determined, sometimes, even though they had two, three wives, you know, God never considers a sin. But he, I mean, he said it's a sin, but he just let it be. But now it's not the case. And so some people, say, you know, distorted and say, it would have, if I was in the Old Testament, I could have had multiple wives. It would have been okay. But that's not what it means, right? So God's picture, the kingdom process, in order to do the process, there were some areas that were allowed back then. So God clearly says, divorce wasn't allowed, but why did Moses divorce? Because if you didn't do it, then he would have killed more, so that's why he just allowed it. So is it the direct will or permissive will is the difference? So if you keep saying, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, and God says, don't do it, don't do it, and he says, okay, you may. Then do you know what people say? God said you may. They say, oh, God said you may. Have you ever said it? You know, you keep asking and asking, and then they get tired, and they just say, oh, okay, you can do whatever. Then what? Then what do you say when you go out? Oh, they say, oh, that person let me. Pastor said I can do it. But do you think that's really the case? Did he really allow you to do it? So God looks at your motive. So in order to deal with your motive, what is the first sign? So he starts to separate, set apart your life, your situation, your surrounding and your... And Joseph, suddenly his brothers didn't like him, right? So he set apart. He starts to set them apart. And you know, even Joseph, he was on a chore and then it happened. Even David was on the chore and then it happened. And even Saul was on a chore. So you just do what you do what you were told and then it goes into the calling cycle. But the main issue is to set apart, to separate. Why does he separate? So in that influence, you cannot grow up. So he separates you. So when you become stronger, then he's going to send you again, or those people will come back to you. But you cannot understand this area. So, you know, Pastor, you say it's love, but why do you keep trying to split apart my family? Why do you keep trying to separate my family? Why are you trying to separate our relatives? relatives? So it's not me, but God is like that. What did Abraham say? At 75, so leave your father's land and your relatives, right? Go to the new land, new language. Go to the new culture. When Abraham was 75, you know, now she's 90. She's 91. If God told you to go somewhere else and live in a different way, would you go? It would be hard, right? It's hard. But God still does it to set apart. So suddenly if your friend, does God keep separating you from your friends? Is there anyone like that? So is there any time you felt lonely because God keeps separating you from your friends? 
you know, why does why do I, why do you see make me feel so lonely right now? So you have to see God's big picture. First Corinthians fifteen, verse thirty three. 말라, do not be deceived wow. evil company corrupts good habits so do not be deceived they're trying to deceive you so that you cannot do all into the kingdom there's many people like that around you so how can you not be deceived the way for you not to be deceived you have to know the truth so you're not deceived if you don't know the truth then you're going to be deceived that's why set apart is very important because as you hear you're influenced right so if, if you don't know how to discern and say no then you're going to be influenced you become passive and if you become passive then lawfully you can be controlled other people can control you and those people who put that word inside of you can control you then you have to choose who are you going to let rule over you that's your choice God just promises so he just speaks to you so you have to choose okay in order to understand this what do you have to understand God wants you to come into the truth so that's why in your life he might continuously challenge you He's going to continuously challenge you. He's going to challenge you. Things are going to keep happening. You might get un irritated, right? Again? How many times from your mouth you said, again? And then what do you say? You say, I'm self-righteous. My way is right. You're wrong. Again. You cannot endure. But if you do that, who loss is it? It feels more unfair. You feel more unfair. So you have to know how to see God's picture. Why is he doing this? So what kind of state you're in right now? Who are you? Where do you belong to? And what's inside of you? It's a time for him to let you know all of that. If something happens, they seem like a very quiet lamb, but suddenly they start yelling and get angry, right? Did you know that there was so much anger inside of you? You didn't know before, right? You just heard that you're such a quiet and nice person. And good wife, quiet wife. So many people, you know, use her, take advantage of her. She didn't know. And then went, uh, uh, abused her, but she, she didn't know the timing. She didn't know the discerning time. So she couldn't respond. If she responded later, it sounds funny, right? To respond later. She becomes childish, so she cannot do this, she cannot do that, so then... So these kind of things, when these things happen in your life, just focus on God. So focus on the Lord. So if continuously things keep challenging you and coming to you, you feel empty. No matter what you do, you're not satisfied. Even if you do this, that, that, do that, these things keep happening. Then you have to calm down and be humble. Listen to his voice, and you have to choose him. And when you choose him, just respond to his word. So challenge, and then respond. And in the between, there's your choice. So everyone is the same. So challenge, and respond. Even Trump can choose. He got famous. Even a historical picture remains. You know, he's bleeding from his ear, but he lifted his arm, fist, he lifted his fist. That, you know, that historical picture remains now. He's so now he can just rest, and it doesn't matter who becomes the president. So you can choose, right? But God's calling. We need to clean up a certain country and build them up in order to do that. And God makes you pay that kind of price. And then what God does is the same. He purifies and cleans up. So the more choices you make, your life might get more difficult. Like Joseph. 
So he was one of the he was considered his favorite son, and then suddenly he was sold as a slave, right? So say you're the prince, but you're sold as a slave to another nation, and you're gonna say, "Oh, I was a prince." It doesn't matter, right? The more you do that, they're gonna try to kill you more. So Joseph, every time that kind of things happen, do you know who he chose? He chose God. The vision that God gave him. The vision that God, uh, the dream that God gave him. So the, his older brothers. So there's God's vision, right? He kept holding on to that. That his vision, the dream that God gave him, would be fulfilled. So in the last generation, why did he give the Gen Z prophecies, dreams, visions? Why does he promise that to the last generation, next generation? Because unless he keeps showing you a new manifest, they don't believe. They feel it was boring. So when you were younger, just one word, you just thought you had to do it, right? You you thought if you had any other thoughts, you would just die. So that time is gone now. So now, if there's no benefit after thirty seconds, they just say no. I don't want to do it. Loyalty. Don't even think about it. So in the last days, in First Timothy chapter three, there's going to be the time of suffering. You love money. You betray. You, be, you know, there's chaos. Every mess. So those things are gonna happen on one side, but another side. I'll pour out the spirit and God's authority and power. You can mess up. You can turn over this whole world. You know, He's looking for His warriors. Do you agree? Do you agree? So regarding the things that are happening in your life, don't be pessimistic about it. God never threw, uh, gave up on His plan. After He created you and let you be born into this earth, the calling that He wants you to do in this time, He wants to reveal it to you so you live in that way. And the kingdom that He wants to fulfill through you, He wants to release that inheritance to you. He's never given up on you. But in order to do that, you have to look at the Bible. He always separates you. So physical separation, you know, just like Abraham, go to the land I chose for you, and he does it again. And then when he seems like it was good, and so bring your son and go to the Mount Moriah that I have decided for you, and it tells him to kill his son again, right? So he separates again. The flesh level and the spiritual level. So he keeps doing it. So in God to fulfill something, He's always going to start from the first level. Do you know what that first level is? Is to make yourself holy. So the Passover. So He saw the Egypt and all the idol worship. You know they're the chosen covenant people, and God treated them differently. But for four hundred fifty years. When he wanted to bring them out, he had to set apart, right? Set them apart. You know, I am the father of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? That has to be engraved into them. How? In a way that they never thought. So they had to catch the sheep and then, you know, sprinkle the blood on the doors and doorposts, right? So in your perspective it seems crazy right let's, let's say that I am the father I am your God I'm going to do something great tomorrow and on your door sprinkle the blood what if he suddenly came to you tonight and said that you know your, your first son is going to say are you crazy I cannot go to school because they're going to say that you're, my dad's crazy they're going to you know so much things chaos is going to happen do you understand so there's always gonna be this challenge, but that you need the your choice. So your choice is by faith. So you have to trust in God. You have to trust in God. You know God is love. He never created you to make you perish. But your th thinking is not changing. That's why repeatedly this these hardships keep coming. So you have to let down your thoughts and you have to set apart, separate. What did Peter say?
You know, he was walking through the storm. Peter, who was afraid. He said, who are you? Because they thought he was a ghost. You know, they were teaching him so much, but to those who were saying that you're a ghost, would you want to teach them more if it were you? You taught them so much, but they said, are you a ghost? But God is not like that. In the midst of that, he was looking for someone who would respond by faith. He said, if it is you, Lord, then tell me to come. Walk on the water. That's by faith, right? What did Jesus say? He didn't say, wait. After I test your faith, I'll come back after 30 minutes. Do you think Jesus said that? No, he said, immediately, he said, come. Even the Lord immediately, He likes us immediately and suddenly. Even I like the immediately and suddenly. Why? Because suddenly something happens, then suddenly there's going to be a breakthrough. He loves it. So what does He say? Come out of the boat. He didn't say come out to the land, it's to walk on water. Come out of the boat. That means your thinking pattern, come out of that. All of your, come, unless you come out of the past that you hold on to, God cannot give you the new thing. Unless you forgive your past, the new thing won't come. So no matter what you do, no matter who did right or wrong, it doesn't matter. So inside of you, everything that's influencing you, that what is that issue? That's the poison. That's the bitterness. So that bitterness ruins your life. So this time, he's giving you the sign is to deal with this. Deal with it. So after Jacob was changed, what's the first thing that they dealt with? He dealt with the issue with Esau, right? Before, you know, he went back because he told him, but he never dealt with the issue yet. Inside of Jake, the issue inside of Jacob wasn't dealt with yet, so he was afraid. You know, God sent the angel to him so that the two camps were surrounding him, but he still didn't believe. He couldn't believe. So from Bethel, you know, he even showed him and he encountered, but he still didn't believe. Why? Because inside of him. Because your heart's not different. So the Old Testament, New Testament is the same. So the inside of you has to change so you can see the time and then you can see the way and the path. So one thing that Jacob did well is that he never gave up. So my mom, what my mom told me, my blessing, the what my father said was the firstborn's blessing, that blessing. So ironically, he forgot about the blessing that God showed him in bed though, but he kept wanting to receive his own blessing in his own way, right? The blessing in his own way. And it didn't work out. So what did he say? He said, what is your name? He said, I am Jacob, the deceiver. I'm the one who deceives. So with that, no blessing can come. So you have to change your name. Your name is Israel. You have to keep wrestling with God. And through that, everything that I prepared for you, that blessing can be given to you. So it's to, it's to change the way. That's the hardest. If you experience how to change the way one time, then it becomes easier because you have that memory. But if you cannot experience that, you keep resisting. So one time, Pastor almost died, and the other, another time, he kept uh, throwing up and doing that. But not, it still didn't. He still didn't like it because he said when. Those who have calling is always those who couldn't study, those who are always last place. So pastor is always worried. What am I going to do at a church that those kind of people teach me? So he was very arrogant and prideful. Because he thought those who had the calling are those who don't study well, those who are last place. So he was filled with arrogance and pride. So he's saying, just be myself, I can be holy. So he was just saying, only me. So he keeps canceling that right now, those words. You understand? So the words that you just said uh, without knowing, what they say in Job 42, without knowing, without understanding. You didn't even know you couldn't understand those words, you have to repent. Those words that you said without knowing and understanding. So regarding your past, you have to clean it up. Unless you clean it up, the new thing won't come. So who blocked? God 
did God block you or did you block you? You blocked yourself, right? Not God. So this challenge is going to keep coming. So the important thing is choice. So your choice and response. You respond in the way that you understand, just like Jacob, because he couldn't understand what did he say. He didn't want to let him go. So it was his last chance. He already sent his wife and everyone over, and if it doesn't end here, then he's gonna die. So everything he worked hard for for twenty years is all gonna go away. So he felt that I have to go to the end. He kept holding on to that that he's not gonna give up. So the it's present perfect tense, right? So you continuously you have to hold on to him, and when you keep holding on to him, then something happens. The next level, you keep holding on the next level, next level. So your picture changes. So revelation of the kingdom is different. Your intimacy with him changes. Everything in your life changes. So then you're like, oh, this was so easy. It was something this easy. You didn't have to work that hard. It's something so easy. So as long as you just change this one thing, but ironically, you know what the hardest battle is? It's the fight with yourself inside of you. There's times that you're tired of yourself. He said, "I can do anything else, but this I cannot do." Do you know what that is? My face, my name. You say that my name is more precious than God's name. But do you know what God says to you? Seek my face. Is it interesting to us? When you, if they get upset, you say, "I'm not going to look at you anymore. I don't want to see your face anymore." Right? Even those people who don't know Jesus, they say those words. So that's how important face to face is. So you have to, as long as you have the confidence to see his face, face to face, seek his face. That doesn't mean that you have no sin, but because of Jesus' blood, you can confidently go before him. So as long as you have that faith, everything can change. So he's teaching you the way. He's teaching you the new way. So that's nothing else. So before you do anything, so what is it? He always makes you repent. He sets you apart. Even to Gideon, after God came upon him, do you know what he told him to do? All those balls, idols that he built up, you have to destroy it and build an altar for me. Even to Elijah, you have to break all the altars and idols of Baal and build up God's altar, right? So the first thing you have to do is repentance. You have to acknowledge what you did wrong. How easy is it? How easy is it? You have to separate. After that, the new thing will come. What is it? You cannot serve God and Mammon, or you have to separate. Uh, you have to separate, right? So the most temptation at the end is is money. So all the treasures and finance comes from God. So you have to trust in Him. So according to the Bible, everything that you stored in heaven is not stolen by a thief, but what you put in this earthly bank is going to be stolen. This is all according to God's word. Okay. Are you worried about your retirement? Don't worry. Just believe in God. Trust in Him. God will guarantee you. God will allow many amazing things in your life. Let's just read one more Bible. Job seven seventeen to eighteen. Job seven seventeen to eighteen. Do you know what July seventeenth is? Do you know what July seventeenth is? It's the day they make the law. So, July seventeen to eighteen. Let's read Job seven seventeen to eighteen. 
For my days are but a breath. But what is man that you shall exalt him? That you should set your heart on him? That you should visit him every morning and test him every moment? Isn't it very interesting? It says, "What is man?" So who are you? You know, God created me, and in God's heart, He's filled with thoughts of you, and every morning, He visits you to do what? So, so that you understand His plan for you, so that you can fulfill that. So every morning He visits you, so that you can know His plan and calling for you. That's why Jesus did early morning prayer. So every early morning when you meditate, you know God speaks to you a lot, right? You understand many things. So He visits you every morning. Are you gonna say no? Thank you. So, Lord, I'm afraid of you coming to visit me. Can't you just come one? Per month, does he come once per month to solve your issues? It's now, right? So every morning he visits you, and then he tests you every moment. Why does he test you? In the world, the test—you know—you get judged by the test. He decide they decide the order. But why does God test you? To see if your heart is prepared or not. Based on that, every blessing that God wants to give to you, He's Testing you to pour it out on you, so the more you test, the better it is, right? Because he wants to pour out many things on you. Because of the human thinking, you don't like the test. Why? Because you don't want to obey. You don't want to do it. So if he tests you, then you say, "What kind of punishment is he going to give me this time?" Those who are in the positive way, if he tests you, then what kind of reward is going to be given to me? So your heart is different. So when you knowing who he is, he's gonna keep visiting you and telling you who he is. He's gonna separate you from the world. He chose you. He's gonna set apart, set you apart from this world. You were washed by his blood. And I redeemed you of all your sins. So when you listen to my will and you obey me and you fear me, then ev- you will not lack any good thing. If you fear me, then I will encamp you with my angels, so that nothing can hinder you, nothing can harm you. And if you fear me, your life will always be abundant. And if you fear me, then the covenant that I spoke to you, you I'll specifically teach you. When you fear me, you will be able to taste my goodness and know it every day. Okay. So honor his word. So he's always going to challenge, and it's your choice, and how you respond. So based on that, your life will change. Your life will change. So there's always an issue of time for us, but in God, there is no time. You can always go back and forth. It's eternal. It's eternal. He is believed that he never gives up on you. So let's. Wouldn't you give thanks to him? So Father, thank you for. Never forsaking me and never forgetting me. Even if I make the same mistake again and again.